Hello everybody, this is Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook and I am here to talk to you about my new series, Family History Series, where I talk about books um, and I talk about my genealogy and family history research and all of that. Um, I am in my bedroom. I thought a different setting would be nice for the family history ones. I may continue here if the lighting really stinks and it just doesn't look that good. I will return to my normal location. The first book I'm going to talk to you about is one that I read this summer, and it is called... Uh, I had to take a picture of it because I listened to the audiobook. Call Your Daughter Home by Deb Spera. And um, the I always tell you who was the uh, voice talent for the books when I read audiobooks. And Robin Miles and Aden, Adenrello, Adenrello Ojo. Let me take my notes over here so you don't have to keep seeing me turning my head. Um, those were the, um, narrators. I've listened to Robin, um, a lot more times and really enjoyed her. So I was grateful to actually listen to the audiobook. The book was set in 1924, South Carolina. Um, it is a fiction, um, uh, story, a fiction story, but it was, you know, there is some historical fiction aspects to it because there's some historical stuff, but, um, it was during a time when they were recovering from the bull weevil devastation so the economy was pretty shaky and um, causing people to panic and and to try to switch courses to make sure that they can get that lucrative income that they want it follows three different women if you look at the cover which is really kind of cool there's um, silhouettes of three different women if you look really good it's right here's one here's another and there's the other one. I don't know if you can see them, but I really like that. Um, and the three characters that we're following in this book are Gertrude, who's a mother of four, who is married to a very, an alcoholic, abusive husband. You have Retta, who's a first generation um, uh, freed slave, who now works for the family that um, owned her family. And then you have Annie, who's the matriarch of the family, and the family is called the Coles family. Um, and you follow her story. And in the in the story, you start out, you're like, well, what do these people have to do with each other? I mean, you could see Retta and Annie because they're Retta is still working for her, Annie's family. But how does Gertrude tie in? But I love stories like this where people that have it seems like nothing in common um, come together to some level to join forces. Um, and find that they have more in common than they think. Um, so Gertrude, when we follow Gertrude in the beginning, um, you just see the, the, the poverty that, that has been a reality since she married her husband. Um, her, you know, I think her family didn't really want her to marry him, but she did. She followed her love and she has these four children and you watch her journey of trying to make sure that she takes care of her children. I mean, that's what a parent wants. And you don't want your kids to starve. You want them to be happy. Um, and so you watch her go through whatever she needs to do to make that happen. The other person, Retta, who again, like I said, was a uh, first generation um, freed slave. Typically, and back in time, slaves, it's not like when you're freed, all of a sudden you have all these uh, employment opportunities. So oftentimes people would stay with the family that actually owned their ancestors and owned them and continue to work, but now they are able to earn a living. Um, so Retta continues to stay on with the Coles family, her and her husband. And then you have Annie, who's the matriarch, and Annie had come from a wealthy, wealthy family before she met her husband, um, and they married, and he's kind of that story of the man that just doesn't know how to manage his money, makes bad uh, financial decisions, is losing money left and right. And Gert Annie, who stand by him as long as she can, and then she discovers more and more about him and finally kind of finds her, you know, her power within herself to say, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. Um, and to reclaim kind of what is hers. So I don't want to give away too much of the story. Um, you know, again, Gertrude is trying to escape that scenario. And by trying to escape the scenario of her abusive husband, 
she ends up for a period of time bringing one of her, her young, I think it's her youngest daughter, to Retta to take care for her. And, you know, she's like, look, can you need, I need you to take care of her. I can't feed her right now, but I need you to take care of her and I will be back very soon to come collect her once I can secure a job and be able to provide for them. Um, and Retta, you get the kind of backstory about her and her husband who had had a child, but the child had died early. And, you know, so that maternal yearning is still there. So she does end up, you know, developing a little relationship with this little girl and, you know, and taking care of this girl. And you watch that how happen. And Annie, like I told you, you know, finds out things about her husband and, and is really not pleased with him and, you know, finds her power to basically, you know, put her foot down with him. A certain scenario occurs where these three women basically have forced to kind of come together. And it was enjoyable to watch that and to watch them all grow um, and change their minds about different things um, and find their own strength. Um, and that I thought was a really um, good aspect to the book um, that they covered. And I just, I like the idea. The reason I chose this book again, I, I felt like, um, you know, it, I felt like it tied to the family history um, series because it it did do the family dynamics. It does bring in the aspects of history and how that is affecting the way the people are operating. Um, and I thought it would. I just thought it was a good one to to bring in here into this this series. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is I with regards to now my. Um, genealogy so I've started and stopped for years now and you know you know you get gung-ho and then you're like oh whatever so I thought what I would do is in the series is also share kind of where I am with things um, and maybe share findings or new resources or what have you so this summer I took a genealogy course and um, I figured it would be a way to kind of get me and keep me on the straight and narrow and just kind of you know hunker it was six weeks, one day a week, and it was a beginning class, and it was absolutely perfect. She gave us more than enough resources for me to continue on um, and get a good foundation anyways. So one of the things that I did um, at her request is, you know, you make sure you find archival safe stuff. You want your documents not to get destroyed. So you can find these sleeves that are acid-free and your documents won't get destroyed. So I am putting in here copies of originals. I'm not putting originals in here. I have a file system with folders that are, are um, acid free that I put actual original documents, but copies go in here that I can carry with me to do research or when I'm doing research, I don't need to keep the originals with me at all times. I've at the, you know, the idea and the suggestion of the teacher is um, I'm putting all of my mother's side of the family in this pink binder. And then I have a binder that is like a mint green that I'm keeping my father's side. So for example, in this one, one of the first things that I have in here is like a family tree my mother gave me years ago. Like she just filled out, took a little form and filled it out with information that she had. Well, my father's side, she goes really far. And my mother's on her side, not so far. And I've chosen to focus for this class and for now on my mother's side of the family. And the reason why I feel that way is because on my father's side, there's a lot of people still alive. Um, they get together and they do family uh, gatherings. So they're able to do more stuff. On my mother's side, there's a lot less people alive and they also jump the pond. Um, you know, I have people that I've come across from other countries a lot sooner. So I have to learn how to navigate that. So, um, so I'm going to be focusing in this binder with information that I've got from class and resources that I have to kind of keep going in that process. But this is a great thing if anybody's starting out is, you know, it's just, it, to me, I like it cause you can kind of put pages in and out. Um, it is big, but you know, it'll hold a lot of information for right now. And if I get too far and it gets too full, in terms of traveling with me to the libraries, I will figure out another way to do that. But I do like the idea of having this and just putting copies in here. 
So that's it for this first book. I have another book that I want to talk to you guys about that I read this summer that I thought would fall in this series. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments if you do. Um, and if you have any suggested genealogy research, resources, links, anything, great. I accept it all. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.